What is up everyone? This is Nova Vaughn and let me tell you what's going on. Well, this episode of The Mandalorian came out, and let me just tell you. Oh, what are they doing? What the hell's going on over there? Seriously. What are they doing? Third episode from the finale, and this is what they give us? Absolutely nothing. The title of this is Guns for Hire, and so it makes you think that Bo and Din are going to look for some Mandalorians, because after all, that's what this la last week's episode left off with, with Bo given the mission to look for other Mandalorians to unite. It starts off with these uh, creatures that we've seen in previous episodes in Season 2. Uh, I believe they're called the Corrin. Uh, that's the leader in a Bacta tank. They are pursued by the mercenaries of Mandalore uh, that Bo-Katan used to be part of. And this time it's led by Axe Wolves. He says to them that they need to give them... Um, a person of interest uh, so they can return that individual back to um, the person that sent them on this mission. Turns out that it's a Mon Calamari who has the love interest with the corn captain. He's, ain't romance lovely. So Bo and Din decide to go to this uh, planet called Plazer. To look for these mercenaries and now you look at this um, these domes here and these tubes here it kind of looks like a Epcot wannabe at Orlando they are diverted to meet these two interesting characters the Duchess played by Lizzo and Captain Bombardier played by Jack Black they tell them that they will take them to the mercenaries, however, they have a mission for them. So great, we get a side mission. Yippee. They tell them that they want them to go search for the cause of some malfunctions of their droids because the droids are doing all the work for their people and they don't want their people to work. They want the people to have a good time while the droids do all the work. They go to the person that's in charge of these droids. So they go to this uh, commissioner, Hellgate, who's played by Christopher Lloyd. And I'm just waiting for him to do the line from his Back to the Future movie as Doc Brown. Great Scott. He's showing Dan and Bo the, what's happening with the, the droids malfunctioning. And it's kind of... I thought this was kind of neat. You got to see some droids that we've seen in the prequels. And they're putting them to um, use. However, they're malfunctioning. Bo is asking Commissioner Hellgate if he can shut this operation down. And he says, if I do, then the people have to work and the people don't want to work. I've got to send you somewhere else to where the droids are being made. So they send them to the manufacturing place where the droids are being made and as you can see here there's Ugnaughts. Bo is trying to get the attention of the Ugnaughts but they're ignoring her and they're just continuing to do their job. However Din since he had uh, previous uh, friendship ties with uh, Ugnaught, uh, Quill I believe is, was his name, yeah, from season one, he talks to them in a way that they understand. In fact, he says, I have spoken. I have spoken. And they listen. They have no clue as to what's going on 
with the droids malfunctioning, so they send Bo and Din somewhere else. They go to this factory uh, that's an assembly line, and as you can see, you can see more battle droids uh, that we have seen in the prequels. Din himself wants to test to see if these battle droids, if any of them, are malfunctioning, so he decides to kick them as they walk by. And of course, one of them does malfunction. It runs away from Bo and Din. He runs through the city, causing uh, quite the panic uh, down the streets, and he's being chased after by Bo and Din. Bo and Din finally catch up to this droid, and they shoot the droid down, uh, Din from the front and Bo from the back. They decide to gather some evidence and they take them, take the evidence to this uh, cantina and that is um, uh, that is um, for droids only. And look at the surprise on their faces when they see Bo and Din walk in and they are looking for this individual called the Resistor. The resistor happens to be the bartender, and he's telling them that they're on a wild goose chase. They go down to this lab where the uh, droid was taken. They look for some data on the droid as to where the cause of the uh, malfunction is and who uh, is causing the malfunction. Now, as you can see, the little white uh, droid, uh, Din asks the lab tech if any of these droids are activated. The droid in the lab is activated, and he starts, and it starts to open fire upon Bo, Din, and the lab tech. However, Din gets his dark saber and cuts the droid in half and the droid is deactivated. They decide to go back to Commissioner Hellgate to tell him that he's the root cause of this um, malfunctioning that is happening to the droids. He decides to put his hand on the button that they think that he's going to shut the droids down, but instead he's going to activate the droids to turn on the people of Plazir. They discover that Commissioner Hellgate was an old separatist who worked with Count Dooku. And Count, and of course we know what uh, Count Dooku was doing with, on Geonosis with, when he had all those uh, separatist leaders uh, joined together. Commissioner Hellgate is telling him how good of a visionary Count Dooku was until the Jedi came to take him down, and of course we know that that was Anakin. Bo-Katan shoots Commissioner Hellgate with a taser-type bullet, and the standoff is done. So we go back to the palace where they're playing this cheesy game where the Duchess ha has to have Grogu use the Force so that she could win. That's fair. They bring Captain Hellgate to the Duchess and the Captain and they're devastated at learning that he was the culprit of the malfunctioning among the droids. They sent him to banishment into exile where he won't have to do anything. So yeah, he got, he got the death penalty, didn't he? The Duchess is grateful for the um, mission that Bo and Din uh, accomplished so she gives them the keys to the city and she tells them that they can travel anywhere they need to g travel um, without uh, being forced to go to them. She also gives Grogu the honors of becoming a special knight. Of course it's make-believe it's not real. So Bo and Din and Grogu they go to the place where it's where the mercenaries are um, stationed, uh, led by Axe Wolves. Axe Wolves tells Bo that what a disgrace she was for, uh, and that she is not worthy of being the leader of the Mandalore. 
Of course, Bo is trying to get the mercenaries to join her, but they're not having anything to do with it. So a challenge is made. Bo decides to challenge Axe for the uh, leadership of the mercenaries, and they get into a, a, a Mandalorian scuffle. Bo wins the challenge. However, Axe refuses to yield because he said that she is not worthy of being the rightful ruler of Mandalore because she does not have a Darksaber and that it's Din that should be the rightful leader of Mandalore. Once again, Din is offering Bo the Darksaber and she's denying it. Axe says that's not the right way to do it. That it has to, they have to fight in battle. However, Din explains to them that when he was on Mandalore, he got captured by this creature, as we saw earlier this season, and that he lost the dark saber and he could not get the dark saber, and that it was Bo Katan who came to his rescue, got a hold of the dark saber, and destroyed the creature. Therefore, he. Din believes that Bo is the rightful ruler of Mandalore and that she should be holding the Darksaber. Axe and the rest of the mercenaries agree that this is an honorable uh, change uh, to the Darksaber, that Bo should get the Darksaber. Bo receives the Darksaber from Din. She lights the Darksaber and that's where the episode ends. So that's what we got in this week's episode of The Mandalorian. And again, it just... That whole side mission just... Why? It did not need to be done. They did not have to do that. It was just a filler episode. I mean... I really don't know what to say about this. To be honest, it definitely was awful. And we're getting close to the end of this season. There's two episodes left. Two episodes left. I mean, and this is what we're getting? This is what we are getting for this season. Disney. Star Wars. That sucks. Suck, man. When the Nielsen ratings came out uh, with the Dr. Pershing episode and how that dropped, I can only imagine how much more that the ratings are going to drop after this episode. Now, I'm of the belief that this episode was uh, slightly better than the Dr. Pershing episode, but not by much. I gave that episode a 3.5 on my rating. This episode, it was initially a 4, but upon review, it's I'm dropping it just a tad. I mean, I'm giving this a 3.75 as my official rating for this episode. Ugh. I'm at a loss for this, people. I really am. Disney. Star Wars. That sucks. Suck, man. So as far as the characters that were in this, the characters at the beginnings, the Mon Calamari and the Corn, that love interest, okay, yeah. The characters played by Jack Black and Lizzo were just god awful. And then we have Commissioner Hellgate that was played by Christopher Lloyd, legendary actor that we've seen in previous movies like Back to the Future and Taxi, the, the series. I'm surprised that they did not use Doc Brown's uh, quotes from the Back to the Future trilogy. Great Scott! Great Scott! Great Scott! The Great Scott! Great Scott! Great Scott! Oh, great Scott! Great Scott! I'm very surprised that was not added. He was the best of the characters that we had in this episode 
uh, with the exception of Bo and Din, because they're main characters. But Christopher Lloyd, being the seasoned actor that he is, uh, played the role pretty decent, in my opinion. I... I thought he this was the best character in this episode, uh, side character that is. Let me know what you guys think of this episode. Please make a comment. <laughs> this should be interesting. Very interesting. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please give this video a like and you can subscribe to my channel as well. You can also follow me on Instagram and join me on my Discord server. This is Nova Vaughn reminding you that it is never too late for a new beginning in your life. So be positive, be cool, and you will be alright.